All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second part of the Hell series entitled You Gonna Burn in Hell with Your Sin. Notice I said sin, I didn't say sins. I said sin. You're gonna burn in hell with your sin. Oh no, there's multiple sins. <laughs> Particular one, so which one is that? That's all we play. Figure that out. How y'all doing today? Let me let everybody know we live. Viewers, how y'all doing? Facebook, YouTubers. Y'all starting to get active. Comments out the comments starting to hit the hit the deck. They just can't hear nothing. <laughs> We're going to get it together. Let me let everybody know we live. Who got questions why I do that? Why is it only one sin that, 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 uh, that you're going to burn with and not multiple sins? We sin differently each and every day. So what what is this one sin that is... It's gonna be stuck with us and it's gonna condemn us to this everlasting fire. Oh, excuse me, not everlasting, eternal fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice question. And over this second part of this, you gonna burn in hell with your sin series? We're gonna get that answer. But if I just give you the answer right now, you ain't gonna understand it. So this gotta be rightly divided. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 and dispensated. <laughs> hey, y'all been studying? Did y'all read 2 Peter chapter 2? Y'all did? Y'all see where false teachers go? That's how you know I can't get up here playing no games. You understand me? I think I might have a special guest today. Might have my daughter come up here. I don't know. Hey, Brittany. My my not my oldest daughter. <laughs> hey, y'all. So look, we're gonna get this together. We gotta understand why you're gonna burn in hell with your sin. But in order to understand that, we gotta under what is sin? You know what I mean? Like what is sin? We got all these different definitions and tactics and understandings and different things that we done experienced or someone has told us over the course of our lifetime what sin is but do we really know what sin is have you actually went into the bible in second timothy 2 and 15 and to figure out what sin is or do you think sin is basically right and wrong Huh? This class is not church now. <laughs> See, I got a pen. They got power in this pen. I can write stuff down on this board. Y'all don't write it to check cross examine him anyway. It don't matter. That's how powerful this pen is. <laughs> what is sin? What is this sin that's going to put you in hell? Because the Bible talks about multiple sins. Huh? This class is not church. I'm a Bibliist. You ain't never sat down in front of no Bibliist, ain't Paulette. So don't try it. I know where you're from. <laughs> I know all about you. Huh? Sin is what puts you in hell. You understand me? Who don't understand that? Who know what sin is? Not here. <laughs> Who got a, just a, 
somewhat definition of sin. You, you, got, you got that? All right, go to the mic. Make sure you state your name when you go up there. What school do you represent? Brownsville High School. Um, my name is Clinton. Sin is uh, anything that's not holy or anything that's not God. Like, like good in God's eyes. All right. Okay. Quentin from Braswell High School said, sin is anything that's not holy, anything that's not of God. Anybody else? Oh, Brooke. All right, go on to the mic. Let's get it together. State your name. What school you represent? Oh, represent it. <laughs> right here? Mm -hmm. Uh, my name is Brooke. I go to Cedar Valley College. Um, I think sin is like, as far as other people, making somebody else fall short as well. So yeah. Okay. So Brooke, representing Cedar Valley College, stated that sin is making somebody else fall short. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. One more person before we dive in. What is sin? State your name when you get up there. What school you represent? Um, hi, my name is Jocelyn. I went to DeSoto High School. And I believe that sin is something that can be a thought and an action. Um, sin is something that is not of God. All right. Jocelyn, she says she represented DeSoto High School. She's not there anymore, but she says sin is a thought or an action, right? Is that what she said? That's not of God. All right, let's see what the scriptures got to say. And you're going to see why a bunch of people going to burn in hell with their sin. They're going to burn in hell. With their sin. Let's just jump this thing off directly to the scriptures. No sense of playing with it. Let's go to the book of Revelations. Chapter 21, verse 8. The book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 8. In order to know. Why you're going to burn in hell with your sin? You have to understand what is sin first. Because a lot of people don't understand what sin is. That's why they're going to burn in hell. I don't know what it is. I'm still accounted for that? Absolutely. How that work? The question is, because I don't know what it is, how am I still accountable for that? And how that work? Right? Yeah. Because you're talking about a holy God. And sin cannot be nowhere near God. Absolutely. Whether it's <laughs> unknowingly or knowingly. It don't matter. Sin is sin. You're telling me that I could be condemned <laughs> off of something that I didn't know that I did. That's, That's right. right. That's right. To damnation. But see, the thing is that we think that we don't know what we're doing. And that's a lie. And we're going to go over scriptures on that too to show and prove. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Let's hear it. Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all lives shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
Let's don't stop. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 through 10. Y'all see these lists of sins? First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine through ten. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Y'all see y'all listen? <laughs> Didn't it say liars? It said all kind of stuff, right? Do I got to write it all on the board? How many of us can fit in one of those things that was that was um, just read. How many can actually fit in it somewhere? We can find our spot somewhere in that. I ain't probably let you can't find your spot somewhere in there because your hand didn't go up. I want us to remember these two verses because we are really going to get the truth in them when it comes to sin. All right. I'll be all day listening, listing on the board sins. All right. So I just listed a few. Now, remember those two verses. Who got questions so far? This is class. It's not church. This class. This is not church. Because you're going to burn in hell with your sin. Why am I saying sin? And these are. Sins. That's just a whole more weight than the other ones. One holds more weight than the other. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I, I would think so. If it if it if they say that in scripture, it's an emphasis on sin and not sin. I mean, that was particularly wrote for a particular reason. Uh huh. I, uh, I think I kind of know what it is now, uh -huh. but uh, I, we gonna we gonna save it for a little life. Real, okay, bet then. Uh, really it's not church. I, I think that. No, I, no, oh, oh, you used to. Oh, okay. Uh, I think the sin that that you that you uh, speak of that's in the Bible that we gonna burn with is the sin of the unbeliever. The unbeliever, like this one, what I wrote right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not accepting the uh, DVR. I think that's the the, the one that's gonna keep us because that's the only one that can technically you know you you um can kind of condemn you because the rest of you can be forgiven for to a, you know to a degree you can be forgiven for being a liar and an adulterer and an uh, extortionist and things like that but if you don't believe hey. in the DVR then it's kind of null and void you know, because you don't even believe in the whole reason why Jesus came down in the first place so that's kind of that's the that's the thing of it. Then you spoke on it last time with the with this uh you gonna burn in hell, that too gonna burn the series of uh the memory and the uh you know of not accepting that you had chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. I think that's the you're not gonna remember all of the other stuff, the, the line and, I mean you probably will remember that, but the most important one you gonna remember is the not accepting the DVR. People coming to you, different people different places, you know, you keep running into this same thing and they keep telling you, hey, accept this, accept this, accept it. They're not telling you, hey, you know, uh, uh, because you are adulterer or because you're an extortionist, you know, blase, blase, they ain't telling you just accept the DVR and, and, and turn from your ways. DVR, what is DVR? 
There was a lot of people that that that, that was died and buried and, and resurrected. Lazarus, huh? Huh? Basically, itself. He raised himself. Who? Lazarus. Oh, so the DBR is Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, okay. Well, we, we were speaking amongst oh, okay. the same people, so I, I kind of thought that that was understood. But I will ex the DBR of Jesus Christ. Let me say it that way. Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. The Alpha and Omega. The Son of Man. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The hope of glory. <laughs> Terry, that's a good point. But it just said all liars gonna burn. It said all liars. So we gotta rightly divide that. So what is sin? What is the biblical definition of sin? Have anybody actually went in and went into the Bible? And got the biblical definition of sin. Hey, you ain't Paulette? Never? Anybody? Nobody's ever went to the Bible and got the true biblical definition of sin? Not the but, uh, it's so how so why we, how we know what's sin and what's not? And we don't know, yes. Um, well, I looked it up. It says an immoral act considered to be transgression against divine law. All right. You looked it up in a dictionary or you went to the scriptures? Dictionary? All right. All of God is to see. You got it from the scriptures? Y'all know how we kind of like just say what sin is? That's because we designed to. <laughs> huh? Here's one thing for sure about sin. Sin, you can't dispensate sin. You know how you got the Mosaic Law, then you got Grace Era, era and, and Millennium Reign? You can't dispensate sin. Sin is sin in every dispensation. Do y'all understand that? Sin is a sin and the, the law, sin is a sin and grace. It don't matter. Sin is sin. There is no different dispensation of sin, period. The only time you get a small dispensation of sin is when God came to Peter and said it's okay for him to eat the unclean food. That's the only time he made a switch. Because at first you couldn't eat anything unclean, pork and, you know, all these other things. But God turned around and told Peter, it's all good. That's the only time. What was the reason for that? Because God was using that to show a metaphor for Gentile and Jews. But other than that, that there's no dispensation of sin. Sin is sin across the board. Who got questions? Sin is sin across the board. Share this video. Tag a friend. What is sin biblically? You understand me? I'm a biblist. I don't mess around. I ain't got to go to Webster. I ain't got to go to no theory. I'm going to the scriptures. You understand me? I write it divide. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Unashamedly. I ain't got no theory. I ain't got my own self. I lean on God's word. So what is sin biblically? Sin is a transgression of the law of God. Sin is a transgression of the law of God. Who know what that means? Transgression of the law of God. Who don't know what transgression of the law of God is? Raise your hand. All right, there it is. All right. See, this class, why, I don't know what 
Hey, I don't know what transgression mean. Fill me out. Who knows what transgression mean? Terry, enlighten the room, please. Transgression is a, uh, 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 basically a sin. It's, it's a breaking of the law. If the law is in place and it says, do not do this, do not do that, and you do that, that is a transgression because you broke the law. I.e., if you run a stoplight, you get a ticket because you were supposed to stop at the stoplight. If it's red, that means stop. So if you run the red light, you have transgressed against the law of the land in America. You broke the law. So if it says thou shalt not kill in the Ten Commandments and you kill, you have transgressed against the law of the land. Thank you, thank you too. I know you understand that, right? If your dad tell you go in there and clean your room and you do not go and clean your room, you have transgressed against his law, against his authority. That's a transgression. That's a sin. Y'all got that? Let's read about it in the scriptures. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Let's read about it. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. You like that, too? <laughs> Tell you like that? We gotta go to the book. You don't believe me? Look. We're going to the book. We're not going off y'all mom and pop theory. Not my mom and pop theory either. We're going to the book. You don't believe me? Look. Sin is to know to do what is right, but yet do wrong. Sin is to know what is right, but yet do wrong. To know right and do wrong. How many of y'all do that sin every day? Has a day went by where you know to do right, but you do wrong? Does that, is there anybody? Raise your hand. To know to do what's right and yet to do wrong is a sin. In order, in order for us to understand why you're going to burn in hell with your sin, the first thing you got to do is know what sin is. So let's read about it. Let's go to James chapter 4 and 17. James chapter 4 and 17. Devin, go to the mic and read it. James chapter 4 and 17. Loud and clear. Therefore it's to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Y'all see that? To know to do right and do wrong is a sin. Terry, you said, what if nobody don't know about the laws? Well, yeah, you do. You know to do right, when to do wrong, when not to do wrong. Don't you? All right then. I don't know I'm committing a sin. That's a little different. Now you know. You know to do what's right and you do what's wrong. That's a sin. You know to put your seatbelt on when you get in your car and you don't. That's a sin. 
<laughs> like you know to wash the dishes the correct way and you do what's wrong that's a sin Dude, because I'm thinking that that's the right way. I've been taught the wrong way for 26 years. Putting the dishes on the side that doesn't have the, uh, disposal, garbage what, disposal. What, what kind of shirt is in there? Oh, I represent Cedar Valley, home Cedar of the Valley. sons. Home of the sons? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> to know to do what's right and do wrong is a sin. I don't care who you are. That's why I say to know. You said, well, if I don't know, it say to know. Put it out there. If I don't know, I'm, I'm washing the dishes wrong, and you bring it to me, hey, you washed the dishes wrong. It's just now being brought to my attention that I did it wrong. Right. Where is the law? Where is the sin? Everywhere. You just stated. If I didn't know that these dishes was being washed the incorrect way, right? That means that there was no law. How are you wrong? Right? I mean, no law was established. Okay. So when there's law established, then there's a room for the sin. If there's no law established, then there's no there's no possibility, there's no transgression of the law. That's right. But the law was established. So no one can say there's no law because it's established. Who got questions? Let's keep going. Sin is having no, no what? No faith. Are we aware of that, Quentin? Sin is having no faith. You sinning by not having faith. You don't got to be taught the hope. You ain't, you want to the lie? I wasn't. You lie at you. No one did that to teach you to lie. They didn't. Oh. I don't know how to have faith properly and I'm you don't know how to lie properly. That's natural though. That comes with that comes with Adam sinning. It is naturally to hope. Let's go to the mic, please. <laughs> Y'all don't talk loud enough, so we gotta go to the mic. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, my name's Jocelyn. Okay. Okay, so when you say to have no faith, is that like just generally in everything or is just like Jesus Christ? I don't know what you, you know what? Let's just read about it. How about that? Let's go to Romans chapter 14, verses 23. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Trey, you got this? You, you don't understand nothing? What's going on? You do? Okay. Romans 14, chapter 23. State your name when you get up there to read this for me. My name is Devin Perkins. And I represent the Soto High. All right, sir. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. What's the example that the book gave us? Did that answer your question? Yes. Huh? It's because I'm reading out of CSB and it say, but whoever doubts stands condemned if he eats because he's eating 
because his eating is not from faith, and everything that is not from faith is sin. That's right. right. Everything that's not from faith is sin. Ex explain that. Like if I'm eating out of not having faith, how is that possible? What do you mean how is it possible? Why are you eating? I'm eating because I'm hungry. Oh, okay. I didn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> you just asked your question. I'm eating because I'm hungry. What they gotta do with faith? Why eat? Because I'm hungry. There you go. You gotta you believe that that food gonna feed you up, don't you? Okay. Uh, to satisfy hunger, I'm not believing that. This why eat? Because I'm hungry. And you going to the pool to hope that it fulfill that appetite. Right? Why don't you eat the tree? Tree ain't got no nutrient, it don't taste good. No, you got no hope that it. No, you ain't uh, getting full of no tree. Well, she's smart. Ain't getting full of that dude. Oh, you eat a lot of things. You can't eat a lot of things, Uber Eats, but no. Why? 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 Ooh. Food is it got nutrients in it. It got stuff in it that, that is gonna get you right. So plants got nutrients in it? Yeah, but it has to be pressed down and and put together. You ain't got no hope in those stuff. I ain't got no hope in no dog on leaves. I don't yeah, want no leaves. Dog 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 I ain't a dog. Oh, <laughs> It's, it's, it got something for everybody. Dog. Sin is having no faith in everything you do. So by me eating, I'm putting faith in the food that's going to fill me up. Absolutely. Because if you didn't, you eat anything. You eat nothing. Brick. You ain't got no hope in that because you can't eat it. You don't eat to get full. You hope that this satisfies the desire. How many times you don't ate food and was still hungry? Dang, I'm still hungry. You, you hope that that food you ate was going to get you right, but it didn't. Was that not me not having faith in the food or what? You did. You just wanted food. Basically, all unrighteous. Unrighteousness in the sight of God is sin. All unrighteousness in the sight of God is sin. All of it. All unrighteousness in the sight of God is sin. If you want to know why you're going to burn in hell with your sin, first you got to understand what sin is. Don't that make sense? I can't take you nowhere else if you don't understand what sin is, biblically. And we can read about everything I'm telling you. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. I think I'm going to have my kid come up here. My daughter. Understand me? 1 John chapter 5 and 17. First John chapter 5 and 17, it reads, All unrighteousness. Y'all up yet? It's sin. What about some? You say all? All. What about the stuff you don't know about? All sins. Do you pass with the stuff you don't know? No. It say all. It don't say all the stuff you know. You get a pass on the rest. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Title up there on the board. You just said you gonna burn in hell with your sin. Right, right. singular. Right, your sin, singular. So. If this is telling me and it says there is sin that does not lead to death, which is talking about the the everlasting fire, then 
what is it? How is there that I have a sin that doesn't condemn me to that fiery furnace? What sin is that? It's a good question. This whole series is based off a of sin that is going to condemn me forever, for eternity. So if there's a sin that, how does that work? That's that's kind of a, a contradiction, ain't it? No. Nah. How so? The reason why it's not contradicted is because you're going to find out how only that sin going to have you burning in hell. <laughs> how you doing? Doing all right? You got your notes? The word sin means to miss the mark. Y'all know that? Miss the mark. mark. Y'all ain't never heard that before, have you? The word sin in the, orig in the original language means to miss the mark. You miss the mark. They use the word sin in scripture to not only talk about the rebellion, being rebellion of God, but also you just missed the mark on something. <laughs> huh? Who got questions? What's your question? How, how do you, how does sin equate to missing the mark? What am I, what am I missing? The, the mark, mark you're missing. missing. That's, the, that's the question. What mark is he missing? If what else? It's on the board. It's right above it. You missed the mark of God's what? Standards. You missed the mark. No, you missed it. I missed it completely. Completely. Sinning. Absolutely. Not by not upholding it. I missed it. Absolutely. Miss it. That's what it means in the original language. And what is the original it's a language? Mark. And what is it? Right? In Hebrew, Greek, it means to miss the mark of God's standards. You missed it. <laughs> huh? Y'all know what missing the mark is? If this the bulls out right here, and I shot the dark right here, what I do? I miss the mark. Y'all confused? That's right. That's right. What that mean? The highs of standards is what created you. But let's keep going. Sin is also imputed from one man's transgression to us all. Sin is also imputed from one man's transgression to us all. Sin entered into the world by Adam and Satan. Who got questions? How is it that she is not accounted for bringing the sin into the world when she is the reason for all of this in the first place? It's a good question. First thing is, Eve didn't eat an apple. Well, 
It don't say that in the book. It says forbidden fruit. That's first. Forbidden fruit. <laughs> I'm a biblist. <laughs> huh? Sin came into the world through Adam because the Bible say that. Why? Because God gave Adam the head. Adam is the head, not Eve. So you're telling me that Adam did not eat the forbidden fruit. We'll be out naked right now. Okay. Um, so what would have happened to Eve? I don't know. Forgiven, possibly. Death came into the world by one man, not by Eve. But she is the real one. No, no she's, she's not. Because she's not the head. She brought it to me. She's she not the head. head. So she don't get blamed for none of the stuff that's going on. Absolutely. She, she didn't punish. Absolutely. Ain't talking about no labor pains. She didn't punish but for the, the world. Got to Adam. And let's read about it. Ain't no sense of having no theory on it. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verses 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Y'all got it? All right, it reads. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. They say one man or, or a man and a woman. What did it say? What about one woman? Because she, you understand me. What did it say? You see, Adam tried that same thing you just did, Terry. He went for God and said, it's the woman you gave me. He said the same thing you just said, Adam. Yeah. Rightfully so. Oh. I mean, because it is her fault. No, no it's not. How come it's not? Because, because God told Adam. Okay. So, so what happened was Adam and his desires for his wife, wife surpassed the strength of the law of God, which said it don't need from the big tree. So, so he transgressed the law. Adam did. Forget Eve. Adam knew what was right and did what was wrong. Forget Eve. So she persuaded me. You claim you a man? No, she didn't. Scripture don't say that. How else did she get him to eat the fruit? He took it in the head. That's what it says. She brought it to him. He could have said what? No. God said don't do this. That's what y'all do now. Y'all get a little tail in y'all face and you fold. You fold. You transgress the law because she put that monk on you. Huh? Huh? God said don't eat from the forbidden tree. Told that to Adam. Adam told his wife. And like Adam didn't tell his wife because if you read the story, she had an interaction with Satan and she said that now nah, we surely can't eat that such and such such and such. Read the story. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 8. Read it. So it ain't like Adam didn't tell her. She disobeyed his transgression. Adam told her not to. Adam said, God said, don't do this. He did his part with her. But she didn't listen. She got deceived. Easily, easily get deceived like a lot of women get deceived today. They don't even know it. Oh, it's just my friend. He mean good. Let's uh, go to the mic for me, please. I said, then Adam Brooke. What's the question? Did Adam get deceived as well? Why do you say that? Because he went. Because he took it from his wife. 
Oh, well, he didn't follow the structure. He didn't follow the structure? No. Like, it, I think he got deceived as well. What, what do you think? think? Thank you, bro. What do you think? You. Go, go ahead and go to the mic. State your name. What school you represent? Oh, matter of fact, just come up right up here. Come right up here where I'm at. State your name. Alexis Perkins. So, what you think? I don't think he got deceived. So, what? You don't think he got deceived? Because men aren't easily deceived as a woman? Oh, okay. He chose to be in the tree. Okay, I'm understanding what you're saying. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Here, yes. How did you get How did you get this woman, this woman, Bucket, bringing him some fruit. Right. How, how, how does not deception? How does not deceive? How, how does she Bucket? Well, she bringing him the food. Well, the first thing you understand what is the word? What, what does, does the word deceive mean? That's just how you set the tone from that. It's an easy answer. To be deceived means someone had a trick on you. Ran some game. They tricked you into doing something, right? Because you got gamed. That's deceived. Adam, the Bible say, he just took it from his wife. And then on top of that, the scripture also states that Adam was right there. And he didn't ask no question. He just, she said here. That's true. Absolutely. Satan knows how to bring down the structure of God. He knew not to go to Adam. That's why the scripture clearly states it was the woman who got deceived. That's what the Holy Spirit said. Now you argue with him. That part. He wrote this. He said the woman got deceived. Go ahead. Like, I understand what everybody is saying and stuff, but if God gave Adam an order, right. and he disobeyed the order and still listened to the woman, right. and he seen everything that was going on, he still ate it. Was like you said, he seen what was happening. Like when uh, Adam ate the fruit. I mean, when Eve ate the fruit. Right. You said he seen it. So why would he? Right there. Yeah, and God told him himself not to eat that fruit. Right. And he still ate it. Right. He missed the mark. He went against the grain. Right. 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 I told him not to eat that. No, no one convinced him. He wasn't tricked by the lie. That was his own fault. He was completely deceived by the devil. Down to that. Adam wasn't tricked. Who, who tricked Adam? Let me know where the trick came in at. He did that because he wanted to do it. From a woman. Right. You said if it was two men right there and he wouldn't did it for the man because, you know? Um, like, I'm saying he only ate the fruit because it was his wife. Okay. Like, it was the women that was with him. Right. That gave right. him the fruit. Right. right. What did that mean? So it couldn't have been a possible persuasion in that? No. No, it doesn't say The Bible so. said he took the fruit away from What about conversation? He just made the choice to transgress the law. Not he. She got crits. So, so it's an exception for her? She got deceived. God didn't, get, God didn't make her the head. That's why sin entered, in, entered through the world by one man, not by Eve. 
Adam is held responsible. That's his family. If you walk up into this facility, say you walk up in my house and you come into my house, my lights are off. You going to the woman because she didn't pay the bill? No. For what? I'm not responsible for that. No, -uh, it's her. We had the understanding. You got the light bill. It don't matter. She's supposed to pay the light bill. But you're supposed to make sure that she does pay the light bill. For what? Because you the head. But, but the light's light out. We need to blame her. No. But so what's she in the app? 88? You don't get no blame? I'm not saying that he doesn't get blamed, but she don't get no blame either because you basically saying that the whole sin being into the world while everything is going on while folks is being condemned to hell is because of adam because he li because the one time he listened to his wife that's, that's right i'm gonna take is one small sin against the holy god and it's all all this god said don't eat from the forbidden tree adam ate it now look what happened that's how holy god is all right, you gonna uh, we're gonna hold him responsible. Absolutely, cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. So we ain't, when we come in the house, we ain't gonna say, Veronica, why you ain't? Why you ain't gonna hold her accountable for the lights being off? I wouldn't dare do that. Why? Because you there. Uh uh, she she we had that established. I told her it is what it is. She let somebody try to tell her into something else, and she went for it. Now the lights off. You were over her, sir. That is what you said when you said I do. Oh. Oh, so Adam get the same. Absolutely. All right then. I'm not disputing that part. And because I'm a man, it's my duty to make sure the lights on regardless. Right? Fair enough. Yes, sir. Now, now, it's his Adam, Adam, man. It's his duty, regardless, not to eat from that forbidden tree and not to transgress the law of God. Because Adam told, God told Adam, he didn't tell Eve nothing. Adam told Eve what God said. That's destruction. Eve got the seed and the devil knew it. He went straight to Eve. He didn't go to Adam. He didn't go to Adam because that's how the structure is. He went underneath the structure and got tricked. And now sin entered into the world for one man. Sin has entered into the world. Now everybody died because he decided to eat the forbidden fruit. Ain't that something? We wrestle with our flesh every day because of the transgression of Adam, what he did. That's cold. He ain't gonna murder nobody. He ain't gonna put no pistols on nobody's head. He ain't drop out on nobody. He ain't gonna commit adultery. None of that. He ain't gonna for a, a, a piece of fruit and ate it. That's it. And look what it caused. You can't transgress. That's how holy God is, his standards. He don't mess around when it comes to sin. Adam didn't get deceived. He wasn't tricked. He ate it on his own. He knew what was right and did what was wrong. This class is not church. You don't got to agree. You can disagree. Go ahead and go to the box. <laughs> State your name when you get up there. Britt. My name is Britt. What kind of person? Cedar Valley. Cedar Valley. All right. I say, is that not us being deceived by sin? If we know what is right and we still choose what is wrong? No, it's not deception. A deception requires somebody to do something to trick you. In order to, have, in order to be deceived, somebody have to influence that. You just simply did the wrong thing, and you know what's right. You weren't tricked. You was you was in full understanding. Oh, no, it's not from God. Why do we still choose to do it? Do we know it's not from God. It's sin. That's why. why you know you know it's not right to sit here and handle our parents when we do. You know it ain't right, but you do it anyway. You weren't tricked. Your parents didn't trick you. Get on your own. Huh?
Eve was deceived. The scriptures clearly states, the apostle Paul said, it was the woman who was deceived. What you say, mama? Oh, this mic. That's your name, you get there, and your age. <laughs> yeah, that's mine. Darlene Perkins. All right. 58. All right. Okay, now I'm getting this. The woman, the serpent said to the woman, you can't eat from the tree. Right. Adam was listening. Right. While the serpent was saying this to Eve. Right. right. Eighty-nine. All eighty-nine. Nah, but, but they, but um, Adam took the fruit from Eve and ate it anyway. Right. Because the serpent told him, "You can't eat. You will not die." Right. He told Eve that. Yeah. Right. Now he actually tell them both of them that. Nah, he told Eve that. He did. He just tell one person. Talk to Eve. Talk to Adam. He it really? You sure? Absolutely. Okay. It said, no, you will not die. Say, okay, say it to the woman, okay. Say it to the woman. See that? So it shows that when, when Adam ate, he looked at his body naked. That's right. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't looking at his body naked at first. That's right. So he was standing there already naked. Right. Unashamed. Unashamed. So why couldn't God say nothing? Why Gordon, not why God not why God would say um you make it. Because I don't want you eating from this tree. Don't do it and I mean it. Why eat and listen? Because she got to see. Like a lot of women today. A man trying to take one what, what's right, what's the you know, say I understand that, what y'all do? Go up this brain. Like you always do. The devil won't keep the same tactic. He's going to hold some woman in purse. And you want to follow up on the tactic every time. I'm not saying it again, though, but you women go stupid. Now, he's a while before he even fought out of that fruit. He wasn't a sinless. He didn't he not see him. He had the authority to say, Serpent, get away from her. He didn't do it. He had the authority to stop his wife. He didn't do it. There's a lot of things he could have done before he fell off. But he fell off. He did. He knew what was right and did what was wrong, which then was makes him transgress against the law of God. And that's how sin in entered into the world. If he would have said, no, nah, I'm not eating that, everything would have been all right. None of us would be here right now, by the way. So you should kind of be happy that he ate the forbidden fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world by one man who's that man Adam, Adam not Eve Eve then caused sin to enter into the world she transgressed against her husband do you understand that her husband told her don't go and eat told her what God said so actually she transgressed against God and her husband She did it anyway. And Adam's such a duck. He did it too. They're going to try to tell God and blame it on her. No, I didn't tell her. I told you. And now since you violate, since you want to cater to women all the time, now you're going to die forever. You and your descendants. We all the descendants of, of Adam. We all die because of Adam's sin. And guess what Adam at right now though? He in heaven. So because of sin entered into the world broke by one man. And so death passed upon all men. Now that all have sinned, this is why. Go to Psalms 51 and 5. Psalms 51 and 5. You can't blame nothing on no woman. 
Look at us. Look how stout we are. Look how strong and tall and less emotional we are. Can't blame none on no woman. She didn't get her act right. If she don't, she going to hell. We ain't no tyrants. We teach the truth. We managers of the mysteries of God. Psalms 51 and 5. It reads, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. What that mean? What does it, what does it mean when they say, and in sin did my mother conceive me? What does that mean? Uh, from the moment that I was um, sperm connected to the egg, I was sin. That's right. From the moment your daddy put one in your mama and it fertilized, guess what? Sin. You don't have all your limbs. And the Bible say, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So now you can see there's no way of getting around sin. You were shaping in it, molded by it. You only got two legs and you sin. Huh? Who got questions? I know when we talk about sin, we typically talk about or think of it as something we do or can stop doing. You feel me? It's something we do and we stop doing. We think we got it. You're a liar. You're sinful. You're going to hell. Oh, I'm, I'm just caught off guard. Huh? Now nah, you're a liar. You like that. This theology comes from misinterpretations of the scriptures. And it's a work-based system. I can stop sinning. I can do something to stop it. How? When you, we just read that in Psalms 51 and 5, what did it read? You are shaping in iniquity. And in sin, and in sin, you were conceived in your mother's womb. How can you stop it? Who know the answer to that? Yes. To stop sin, you can't stop, you can't stop it, but you can slow it down with the help of the Holy Spirit. All right. Actually, with the Holy Spirit, you don't sin. But we'll get into that later. Sin is so much more than intentional mark missing. Y'all know me about mark missing? Like missing the mark? You sin intentional and unintentional. Huh? Worthy of condemned damnation. Yes, because, because no sin can even come close to a holy God. But I didn't mean to do it, There you go again. You sin just by being born. Are you serious? You missed that part. You bypassing that part. You going right to your own work. I, I pride stuff. I didn't know. Don't matter. That's how scripture say you were shaping in, in iniquity. Fast and molded by. I was merely a man. <laughs> Look at the word sin, y'all. How do you spell sin? S-I-N. Look at that, Look at that letter in that word. 
What letter in that word that sound funny? Ah. Ah, ah, ah. I didn't know. Ah, ah. It wasn't my fault. Ah, 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 right? And it's the same ah that somebody used to commit the first sin. Actually, his name is in the first letter of this word. What is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> we ain't got to the end yet. <laughs> I got to come up with something for the end. I ain't got that far yet. <laughs> Satan did the same thing Terry back there talking about. I didn't know. That. That's why he got kicked out. And that's why he's going to burn in everlasting fire. Are you going to go with him? You sure? You going to go with him, Vontae? Quincy, you gonna go with him? You don't want to go there? It's gonna be fun now. Huh? Because you're gonna burn in hell with your sin. We just read when we open this thing up that our lives go to hell. Who ain't here who ain't here ain't never told a lie? Raise your hand. Mm-hmm. Forget E. Well, let's talk about you then. Have you ever lied? Oh, well, here you go. <laughs> Just look at the word sin. I. Look how it's spelled. I. That's how you think about it yourself. You self love them. You get up, make yourself pretty. For who? For the next man to stumble. Now you commit a sin. Oh, I look good. Let me put this on. Not knowing. That men are looking at you lustfully, causing them to stumble. And the scriptures say, if you cause somebody to stumble, that's a sin. I didn't know I did that. You know, you know what you put on causes pe people to sin. I, didn't know I, did. I can't help how I look. You know, you lie, no no matter. Talk, talk about that one. So a plenty of them might go down the list. Oh yeah, I have lied. All right, yeah, you sir. I'm not disputing that part neither. I'm going to definitely deserve it. You put on clothes. You put this on. You do this and you do that. You causing men to stumble. Huh? But that wasn't my intent. It don't matter. Intentional or unintentional. You think because it's unintentional you get a pass? Why you keep saying that? You're going to hell. It don't matter. I'm gonna be fresh. I'm gonna get my twist. You understand me? Huh? It made no sense. You line up 40 boys, 25 to 30 of them look like Spun, uh, Sideshow Bob. You understand me? You causing men to stumble. Let them hug all on you. You sinning. You ain't dressing modest like the scripture tell you to dress. No, you want to try to show your body off. Oh, I'm not doing no, I don't mean no harm by it. Yes, you do. It don't matter if you do or don't. That dude is looking at you and you causing him to stumble. You are sinning and you're going to hell. Modest, like the scripture tell you, to dress modest. That was a quick answer, wasn't it? Why well, post the word, dress modest. If I, if I naturally look good in everything that I wear, how is that dressing modest? If you are the truth, you okay. I don't know how you miss that. Is that hard to miss?
Because you sitting here with your shirt all up. Come on up here so I can see how you look. Get on up here. Get on up here. In class like this. Look at him. Look at him. Shirt all open. I'm in I'm I'm the house. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the house, man. I'm around family. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't seen it against nobody in here right now. Ain't nobody <laughs> tempted by me at all. You don't know that. You don't know somebody is um, low key and they would never say it, think you attractive. They might never admit it. I mean, I doubt it though, but. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all understand or no? Y'all didn't know that? You want to get up and get your eyebrows done? Get the eyelashes on? Want to start wearing makeup? How you know it's, it's somebody that's not looking at you? That's why the scripture tell you, don't wear makeup. Y'all know that, right? Y'all didn't know that? Oh, but when she don't wear makeup, y'all think she gay. You see how cruel the world is? Oh, something wrong with it because she don't wear makeup. Oh, she don't dress seductive. Something wrong with her. No, something wrong with you, bro. You transgressing the law. You causing people to stumble. Something wrong with you. Get at yourself. You know what I mean? You ain't supposed to be wearing makeup. <laughs> huh? Every time you get up in the morning, you got a little black green around your eyes like a dog on raccoon. Don't even put it on right. It be smeared all down the side, the right side of your face, back of your ear. <laughs> huh? All you see is little, little loops on your head. Uh, 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 uh. Talking about you can do some edges. Be way down here. Uh, uh, uh. Talking about baby her. There ain't no baby her. We all sinning every day. That's why we're in desperate need of a savior. Who? Jesus Christ. Who can block that stuff clean that we do? His death, burial, and resurrection. Who confused? You outside hooping with your shirt off? How do you know Shane looking at you like that? I'm outside. It's 110 degrees outside. I'm supposed to. Then why hoop? hoop? If it's 110 degrees outside, you know it's hot. Then why I'm hoop? I'm getting my exercise. I'm keeping my heart rate up. I gotta stay fit. The next case is leaving your shirt on. on. So you want me to you want me to you know, you want me to burn you want me to burn in this life and the next. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we had run we had rain in seventy two days. You talking about some dog gonna keep your shirt on? Mind get mad at me sometimes. I'm not no fit guy. It's hot outside. It's 110 degrees outside. If it's hot outside, stay in the house. Is that right, Alexis? If it's if it's hot outside, stay in the house. If it's too hot to hoop, and you can't take where well, you got to take your shirt off, don't hoop. Wait till it cool off. By then, it'll be dark time. I will hoop early in the morning. Where it ain't dark. It's 95 degrees at 7 in the morning in Texas. But the thing is, most of y'all hoop inside of a gym anyway where it's air conditioned. Just like a... We ain't living in Pharaoh time. You get yourself put together and causing me to stumble. You a sinner. You sinning. You like that attention. You so deceived. He don't care about you. Never have. He want, he want to hit. Am I lying? Am I lying? Huh? Quentin, am I lying? Say it so I can hear you. 
That ain't swerving down. They, they the reason for it. You're not. You're causing me to stumble. you sinning. Oh, I look good. Okay. You're going to look good right in hell. You and your makeup. The Bible says you're not supposed to wear makeup. Like Jezebel. But you don't know that because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. You don't read your Bible, so you don't know that. That's in the New Testament. It's in the New. Write it divided. Write it divided. Google your phone. It'll tell you everything. You didn't know that? Oh, because if, if, the, if the New Testament don't say, you know, you can go out and walk outside naked, that means you can do it. No. Are you serious? Let's be real. Stop playing. See, y'all playing with this. Trying to suppress your own sinning ways. No. That's why you're going to burn in hell with your sin. Uh-oh, it's starting to make sense now. The sin you don't want to let go. The lustful desires of your own self. Huh? You spend two hours getting ready to call somebody to sin and you claim God. Look at me. I'm dressed modest. Certain things I just can't wear. My wife say, no, you can't wear those. You got to put them up. So sometimes I got to retire. No, you can't walk around like that. Go put this on. Sometimes I just got to retire. Huh? Y'all thought I was going to go just brush over that part, huh? No, you a sinner. And you got people looking at you and they imitating you. Now you're responsible for them too, you false teacher. Huh? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, you know, just enlighten you. So what? She don't wear makeup. Bronca ain't wear makeup until she got in her late 20s, I think. Her early 30s. You don't know how to act without makeup. You can't live your life without putting some kind of doggone color on your face. And that come from the Jezebel spirit. <laughs> huh? Get off. Oh, they gone now. Everybody gone. It don't matter. <laughs> Ooh, they all left. That boy say zero. It don't matter. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You start calling that stuff out. They want to run. I don't, it don't matter. You not no light. You a solar power operating light. You only shine when you're around other light. You're not self-sufficient through Christ. Huh? There is actually five times in the Bible where it tells us what sin is across the board. In these five things, we're going to cover these points throughout this entire series, okay? But let's start like this. Let's read James chapter 1, 13 and 5. While they getting that, who got questions? James chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. You ain't got nothing in your closet. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 5. Sorry about that. You ain't got nothing in your closet that's modest. And you're not fine. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. I know I messed up. I said it all wrong. It's like God wants me to go forward. He kind of, kind of like he wants me to talk about that. Your whole closet. 
is skin tight, provoking, provo uh, what is it? Provocative attire. Modest, modest, like the scriptures say. Like what I got on, modest. And 24. John chapter 7 and 24, what does it say? It says, stop ju judging according to outward appearance, rather judge to according to righteous judgment. That's right. What about? Like your outward appearance, like, for example, what is Terry's wearing? That's his outward appearance. Right. Are we judging him based off what he's wearing, or are we judging him based off his righteousness? All right. So, so you have totally misinterpreted that too. Now, let me help you understand what this means. The scripture is talking about judgment of the heart. Right? Outwardly, meaning the things that you can actually see. Not his actual what he got on, what he's actually doing. Judging his works, judging how he moving, judging how he treating people, etc. Not his actual attire. Because the scripture says, take the plank out your own eye. Right? And once you remove the plank out of your own eye where you can see clearly, then you can what? Go back and what? Correct your brother. Quentin, you said you had something? Go to the mic. State your name and talk loud. My name is Quentin. Um, um, what if, like, you get it, like a haircut or something, and girls like that or something? All right. Like that. The, the question, question is, what if you want your haircut, and the girls like that? Are you causing them to stumble? Are you causing them to stumble? <laughs> Then you see By giving your hair cut? Or you causing them to stumble? Yes. I'm self-grooming myself. But they love are you. Are you causing them to stumble? That's the question. Yes, I am. Then you sinning. By giving your hair cut. Did he, did, 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 was that clear? Who don't get that? Y'all got questions? All right, y'all two come on up here. Y'all had a whole conversation. Come on up where I'm at. Come on right here in the camera where they can see you. Yeah, right here. Right here. All right. What was y'all talking about? What was the question? Okay, so grooming yourself. All right. And then she's like, okay, but that's a part of self-love. Okay. Okay. Sometimes, like, self grooming is, you could be washing your face. Okay. You could be brushing your teeth. He's not trying to do that to impress nobody. Okay. You just want to keep going. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I love myself. If I wash my face every day, that doesn't mean, oh, yeah, I'm doing it for somebody else. That that's means. That's good, good. That's a good argument. Thank you, ladies. Let's get that answer. The Bible tells you to, it's okay to take care of yourself now. You see, the Bible says you don't hate your own flesh. So it's, all, it's okay to take care of yourself. Brush your teeth, wash your face, etc. It's when you go to the point of doing things that cause you to really, really love yourself. And they cause other people to love you as well in a lustful way. Y'all like when girls got bundles in? Bundles? What kind of hairstyle y'all like girls to have? All right, what kind of hairstyle y'all like boys to have then? No. I'm gonna see if you got the same answer. I wanna see, I wanna see if you're gonna say, oh, I don't know, I, don't, I was trying to see. Huh? <laughs> so what about girls? What kind of hairstyle you like girls to have that you like? It don't matter. So it can be bald headed. You say it don't matter. Y'all see what y'all dealing with? Y'all see that? They don't have. They don't know what's going on. Other, 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 other. It don't matter. They want to be bald headed. 
Chicken be bald headed? <laughs> James chapter 1, 13 through 15, it reads, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bring forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. Who confused? One, two. I mean, everybody else got it. Okay, three, four, five. So everybody confused about that. All right, let's go CSB. Oh, here it is. No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Who confused? One, two... If you're going through something, you can't say that's God putting you through it. Because God don't tempt you. Oh, God is trying to test me out and, you know, and see how I'm going to handle this situation. Wrong. Eh. It just say, no one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God. Don't you know what you say? It says, since God is not tempted by evil and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. So why are you walking around saying, I'm just trying to show, you know, God has got me going through this for this time or such and such. Wrong. Y'all get the truth in here, ain't you? Being tempted. God don't tempt you to no evil. It tell you why you're tempted. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires lustful ways you caught in yourself now you in that trial because you got caught up in your own lust and when 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 it's when sin is fully grown it produced death that's why people die early full of sin sin I took you out So the reason why we die is because of sin and you don't got enticed by your own lustful desires because you think you're fine and you're not. You're not fine to everybody. So I can say that pretty confident. Everybody don't think Atlanta Perkins is fine. Not everybody. Huh? You walk around like you're the finest thing on the block. Got more selfies in your phone than the camera can take. Don't make no sense. That's why you're going to hell. When Adam failed by, disobe by disobeying God, he took the nature of sin. He took the nature of sin. Meaning that he became sin. And not only that, everybody that come from Adam has that same nature of sin. So how can you stop sinning? I was like, how do you stop sinning? Even with the Holy Spirit in you, you still sin. Right? The Holy Spirit is dwell in me. Y'all saying I don't see it no more? I don't reduce my sinning from 1 million to 999,000. 
<laughs> I'm working my way on down. But I never reach it. That's why I need God's mercy. I need somebody to blot out that with their blood. Who that is, Bunte? Hold on. What? Yeah, there, there, there. Oh, oh there, there, Lazarus. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The hope of glory. He passed on to all of us. Mouse over. We, we got three minutes left. He passed on to us. He passed on to all of his descendants, that sinful nature, and that's why we die. There's never been a man that walked this planet who hadn't died. Name him. Name a man that walked this planet who, has, who didn't die. Name him. Enoch. He died when he went to heaven. He got switched over. Flesh and blood can't get into heaven, so he died. He got carried off in the chair, didn't he? Flesh and blood. I said Jesus, flesh and bones. Elijah, ain't it? Uh, he, he, he got transformed before he got up there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, got, he didn't leave his atmosphere without dying. Best believe that. No man. He got sent to heaven alive, yeah, but once he got high enough, when the oxygen went there, oh, he died. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying, Snoop? <laughs> His human flesh died. He's a sin, full person. Yes, he died. But he got, he died in a heavenly way. There is no escaping it on your own, but only through Christ Jesus. You sit down and you're you given a mean persona. You sinning. You sit down and you're given this nice, welcoming persona. Yeah, you sinning. Because you're running game. Nice and welcome to, to you, you buddy. buddy. Hmm. What about the next? Everybody don't think it's a nice and welcome to someone. Oh, look at him. He's trying, he trying to run game and like he's nice so everybody can come to him. Oh, that's your for misinterpretation. Oh, you guys need song. Oh, you just talking about being nice and welcoming. You just you. She might like that. Somebody might like that. I was oh, very nice. Now what he got on? Look at him. Look at him. See what it look like. Ooh. Did y'all get that scenario? Oh, he nice. Open doors. Ooh, boy. Hey, what he look like though? Yeah, you call somebody stumble. Yeah, I'm being nice. I'm doing the best. How am I being, how am I intentionally or unintentionally sinning if I'm doing something that's biblical? If I'm following Christ, how am I doing that? Because you got a sinful nature. You are fasting and saving in iniquity. Conceive. But I am doing something that Jesus told me to do. You can never be good. You can learn that? No one is good. Not one. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody righteous. Not one. I'm good child. Ain't it? You ain't good. I'm not, I'm, You're not good. I understand that. Uh, just know your things you think that's good, it ain't. You're not good. I'm not either. Yeah, so that, 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 that work. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Who got questions? I'll die because we all sin. Why do we sin? Because of our own lust. We lust at ourselves. 
we, we don't got so comfortable with sinning. We don't even realize that we are sinning. We don't realize that we are causing other people to stumble. You're so caught up in your own self, in your own motives, in your own ways. And that's why you're going to hell. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, blood atoning sacrifice, you headed there. Mm -hmm. I'll start cutting. Ain't nobody. It's, it's cool. This thing can put on YouTube. Nobody care because you mad. Nobody care about your feelings. I don't know why you think we moved. Ain't nobody moved. It can say zero. You being mad don't mean nothing. Who are you scaring? You're going to be scared in hell. Intensified. Magnified. Multiplied. Maximized. <laughs> huh? Satan has deceived us so strongly that we look upon other folks' sin and judge the severity of their sin to ours, and we determine how good we are to the next person. 